everyone, it's Julia. This week we celebrated Earth Day and I wanted to do some Earth Day projects and I came up with these nature themed journals and this is one of the easiest fabric covered journals that I've ever made and it just goes together really quickly and uses supplies that a lot of us crafters or sewers would have it on hand. Inside, just keep with the save the tree type theme, I did use mainly uh, things that normally would be probably thrown away. I got a lot of these at, at uh, packs that I got at the thrift store and old journals and things. And I'll talk more about that later. But I wanted to share this idea with you, so let's get started. I am using a canvas cotton for my outside of my journal covers. And I have my piece cut at 11 inches wide by 8.5 inches um, deep or, or tall. This, and I haven't folded here, just so I can get the front side of the journal. I'm going to be adding a background here. I love using stencils and my gelatos and a baby wipe. And I'm just basically putting that gelato right on top of the stencil and then taking my baby wipe and just rubbing it. And then you just get its really cool design. And they seem to blend really well. Um, uh, this is not going to be a washable project, just to put that out there, but I have had pretty good success with washing gelatos, especially if you activate them with a fabric medium. And again, just rubbing those gelatos right on top of that stencil and then taking my baby wipe and just, and just rubbing it through that stencil. This is such an easy way and quick way to add some interest to the background. I grabbed another stencil here. This stencil I actually got at Walmart uh, many years ago. So you can find stencils in a lot of different places. And I just used little pieces of the stencils. If you don't have gelatos, there are other crayon type things you could use. The neo colors would work. Um, Intense blocks would work for this as well. So just use what you have and experiment. Just using the baby wipe to wipe off that stencil. One of the things that I have been doing while we've been in lockdown is organizing all my little appliques that I have previously cut out. And I had all these abstract trees and I was wanting to use them in this project. I'm just going to be arranging them into a little scene here. Working on two complete different journals. And then I also cut out all these sayings that I had on a piece of, of fabric. I, I put heat and bond light on the back of them and then cut out just a ton of these sayings. And this fabric is so old. Probably have had it in my stash for at least 10 years. But one of them says, love a tree, and the other one says, save a forest. So I thought both would be very fitting for this Earth Day themed journal. And have heat and bond light on the back of, of all these appliques. So I am just ironing, ironing them into place. This is also going to set some of that... Um, those gelatos and some of that that color as well just set it right into the fibers now I'm gonna unfold my my journals and I'm at my sewing machine and I am just gonna be free motion stitching these appliques on so I just have a single layer of my fabric here and I'm just gonna outline my pieces now I wanted to add some detail to this leaf and so I am just going to be adding some of the veins and outlining that, that leaf as well. I have dark brown thread on. I have my feed dogs dropped and this is my um, free motion foot that I have on. And I am doing all the traveling and all the, the movement. One of the biggest tricks to free motion is to get that movement and it just takes some practice. You just want to have, be smooth and you just want to just keep it moving. 
just meander stitching throughout this tree and then hooking on to the other tree just going back and forth I like to outline it more than once you can see the back there now I'm going to add a tie to these this is going to be closed with a tie this is just um, seam tape and I'm cutting 12 inches so each journal will have two pieces of 12 inches and will be attached to both to the to the middle of each side I'm just going to pin that into place take it to my sewing machine and I'm just going to zigzag that on and do the same with the other one for the inside I am using cardstock from a scrapbooking um, paper and this is not heavy this is a lighter weight scrapbooking paper making a mark I want to cut it down approximately a fourth of an inch smaller all the way around on my on my, on my, my, my cover I'm just taking a metal ruler and my snap blade and cutting that just following the mark there I'm gonna have that one long strip I'm gonna make a bookmark out of that so I do save that and then I'm also gonna cut this last piece off and that smaller piece is going to be the pocket so I will also save that piece so I have my two pieces and we'll be cutting the other one as well I'm gonna use heat and bond light and I'm going to my heat and bond light that the, the, the um, sticky of the adhesive side is up right now and I'm going to iron it right to this to this piece of card stock or scrapbook paper making sure my iron doesn't touch it because I don't want that stuck to my iron um, and then I'm going to iron the other one on as well the same thing just get that into place this is not only going to be an easy way to adhere this to my my book cover but it also is going to add some stabilizer and just make it a little bit stiffer I'm just taking my my scissor now and just fussy cutting this out once it's all cut out I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to iron it again just to make sure that that is adhered really good and set it aside to cool off onto the pocket now I want to reinforce the top edge of this pocket so I, I took out some of my washi tapes and I'm going to use that this is very similar to like a masking tape but it, yet it's decorative and just adds a nice finish to the top of this pocket but also is really going to add some strength to it and I may do the same to the second one And now I want to do the bookmark. I'm going to cut these long strips down to approximately eight inches, seven and a half, eight inches. Just going to um, take my glue stick and I'm going to glue these onto a piece of cardstock just to give it a little bit more strength just adding some glue stick to that second one there and then I will be setting these aside so that glue stick completely dries because I will be stitching around the edge of these and I and I do want that glue stick to to be dry now it's on to finishing the inside of my journal covers just peeling that heat and bond light or heat and bond away and then I'm going to place this just get it centered and then iron that into place sticking my pocket into place just lining it up and we'll be using my clips and just clipping that and just using a couple three clips just to get it to keep it in the right place while I sew it 
Now it's to my sewing machine and I will be going all the way around this, going back and forth at the beginning of that or the top of that pocket and then doing my edge stitching on my, on my um, bookmarks as well. And I'm at my sewing machine. Now I'm just going to leave this canvas frayed. I really love the look of that and so I rip it to when I rip when I get my canvas to the right size I rip it instead of cutting it so I get this nice um, fray on it. Every time I turn my turn this this when I get to a corner I bump my tripod. I'm so sorry you're gonna see a little jiggle every single time here. Nothing like sewing with a tripod between myself and the sewing machine to make things just really interesting. One last side here and then I'm going to go back and forth just on the top of that pocket. And then doing my bookmark, just going right along the edge of this. I do like to use a little bit longer stitch when I'm sewing through paper. It's probably at like a 3 or 3.5. You're always going to want to change the needle when you're done sewing on paper as well. Fussy cutting these out, just getting um, that backing off of there. And then I'll have my, qu my quarter rounder. I'm just going to round the edges. Clipping threads. And marking the center top there. I'm going to be poking a hole in that. And now to mark the holes on my, my cover. I'm going to get the center and I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch on either side of the center. And I'm on the inside of my stitch line. I don't want to cut, I don't want to um, poke my holes, punch my holes through my stitching. So I'm on the inside of, of my stitch line. And again, just have my center there and a, a quarter of an inch on each side of my center. And I use my crop dial to Hole, to punch these holes. It goes through fabric really well and, and also of course the cardstock. It's getting some of the fabric away. And now it's back to my sewing machine with my free motion foot on again and I, my feed dogs are dropped. I have my cre just cream off white thread on and I'm just going to go around and around and around on these holes. And that's going to reinforce them enough. You can certainly add eyelets if you, if you have eyelets on hand. Uh, but this is an easy way just to get reinforce those circles. You don't really see a lot of it because the elastic covers most of those circles anyway. Such a slick way to, to add pages to a journal is with this elastic. There's going to be two signatures and so I'm bringing that elastic through the bottom and then through the top and then I will tie it. I've cut this elastic at 27 inches and that gives you enough to be able to tie a knot and then you want a couple inches um, for the tail. And that completes the cover. It was, it's just such a slick way. I like to tie it and then I like to just roll it a little bit just to get that form, that shape. And then it's on to the second one. I'm just going to show just briefly how again how I, how I thread it really easy. Very little of the elastic shows on the on the on the outside and most of it is on the inside when you do this this double signature. 
This is two millimeter round elastic in a beige color. All my supplies will be listed down below for your convenience in the description. Punching that hole in the bookmark. And then we'll be adding just a little bit of this seam tape again to the top of it just to finish off that bookmark. Of course these bookmarks are completely optional but you have that extra scrap always left over and so what a great way to use it. And it just sticks really nicely into the little um, pocket. Here's what I've been using for some of my pages. I have this really old Better Homes and Garden book. This is like a 1960s and then another landscaping book. And I got both of these at the flea market. This whole pack of, of lined school paper I found at the, at the thrift store. And some of these ledge, old ledger books I either pick up at the flea market or sometimes the thrifts at, at, at um, antique malls. This little old journal. I use some of my scraps, my cuts from scrapbook, all sorts of things go into my junk journals. Love this, the graphics on these, and I want to make sure to include a graphic in the center of each of my signatures, because I just, just really love how those old, those old pictures. I'm folding these, this landscaping um, in, in half, and then I'm going to add just some paper to the, just glue it on so people can, you can add a photo to it or you can, you can journal right on this. Makes for an easy way to um, use up some of these old books that you might have and just to add them to a journal. Just using a glue stick to, to attach some of these old tablets, papers. And then on the inside of this I'm going to just add a, just a half a page. I want, I want some of the photos to show or some of the pictures to show on this and some of the words. So this, this is just one idea that you can use, is how you can use some of those old book pages that you might have. This is another a journal that I had picked up at the, the thrift store and some of it was written in but I'm just using some of the blank pages and it's going to be ripping those out but I, I want I don't I want a bigger piece and so what I'm going to do is is cut those that rough edge off and then I'm going to use my my washi tape again and join these pages and that way it'll easily slip underneath the elastic I've been cleaning out my sewing room and, and getting some of these old products. Like washi tape is another thing that it just doesn't last forever. And so I wanted to make sure to get some projects going where I'm using some of these things. I have all my pages folded now into a signature, making sure I had that really cool photo right in the center because I want to be able to see that. Just marking where I want to cut these. I wanted about a, about a quarter of an inch um, shorter than my the book my book cover. Taking my metal ruler and my snap blade again and just running this along. I find this to be an easy way to cut pages. I mean, there's so many different cutting methods out there, um, but these snap blades are, are work really well. Just make sure you have a sharp, you know, snap a blade before you start so it's sharp. And then these just slip right underneath. This is a fun way. You can add pages so easily. Take pages out. Move them around. Um, it's just an easy way to, to complete a journal. Thank you everybody who has joined me today. I hope you have a chance to create. I'm going to be adding a few pictures at the end. Stay safe everyone. Bye for now.